Brand disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Fringe check, fringe check, download today. Fringes is a new mobile app designed to meet, mix, and post with Torah keepers like you. That's right. How pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity? Bring it out. Fringes is available on Google Play and the App Store. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 9 of Debate Talk Free Radio. I'm your host, Sal Showtime, and we are back once again. As always, get your pen and pads ready, take down some notes, and make sure you call in. The number is 319-527-6239. Today is the preliminary show for the Christianity on Trial. That's right, Christianity on Trial is coming up very, very soon. The actual date is actually uh, Friday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Friday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You have two teams. You have Team Hebrew versus Team Christian. Uh, the team captain for Team Christian will be Messenger of Truth. Uh, we don't have everybody here right now. Everybody's trying to call in. But as everybody, you know, get in here periodically, we'll bring uh, everybody on to introduce themselves. And the title of this show is Christianity on Trial, Defenders of the Faith. Once again, Christianity on trial, defenders of the faith. Everybody know that's been following the program. We already had nine messianics on trial. We had messianics on trial. And this is the third installment for the trial series in Christianity on trial. So, again, this is the preliminary. Get your pen and pads ready. Take down some notes. Again, our number is 319-527-6239. We're just waiting for more people from the team to call in. But in the meanwhile, let me just uh, introduce who's here right now. Let's go to the team captain for Team Hebrew. And it is Mac Thomas. Welcome to the show. Hey, shalom, Sal. Shalom, everybody. What's going down? All right. What's going on, man? How you feeling tonight? I'm really, feeling really good. Just got out of a nap, so I'm wide awake. I'm ready to get this thing started. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. And uh, we have a lot of people on the phone line, so if you're on a team, make sure you press number one, y'all. <laughs> make sure y'all press number one if you're on the teams. Let's go to the next person. Let's go to Brother Israel. Welcome to the show, Team Hebrew. Shalom Aleichem, Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah, Malek HaAlom. Bless the name of Yahuwah, the King of the Universe. All right, all right. What's happening with you, man? You ready for this preliminary show? Oh, of course. You know, I'm, I'm ready to see what um these these men are going to defend. Christianity, which they believe is the truth, so I'm really interested to see what they have, and I have a couple of questions I'd like to see how they answer it, and you know, just to see what type of type of men that we're dealing with today. All right, so I see we got a few people pressing number one. I'm going to check, you know, check behind the scenes, but in the meanwhile, Mac, let people know what does this trial mean to you, and what's your purpose, uh, being a, you know, on this trial as far as being a team captain, that. My uh, purpose uh, for this trial is to basically stand for the Torah and all um, and all the mission that the Torah is meant to be for us on uh, Team Hebrew. It's meant to be a light. It's meant to be a foundation for us to start to govern ourselves to um, to how to treat our our brother, our sister, you know, our wives, our husbands, you know, how to treat us as a nation and um, what I feel as if is being uh, attacked here is there's a religion out there that has this position to go against the very foundation that the Most High set for us to be uh, set for us to stand upon, and they claim as if they're doing the Most High's work. So we're going to show that that is a lie, and just like uh, Jezebel in her high tower, she has to be pushed down. And that has that whole image, the whole um, religion has to be thrown down and it has to be destroyed. 
All right, so you heard it right there from the team captain, Matt Thomas. Again, the number to call in is 319-527-6239. By the way, just to let y'all know, so far, um, the official team is supposed to be four on each team. But right now, for Team Christian, we have only two members that's officially on the team as of now. That could change if he finds anyone else, you know, before the date, uh, Friday, April 26th. But as of now, it was only two members of uh, Team Christianity. Uh, however, Messenger Truth doesn't mind if it's, you know, four people on the other side or not. He doesn't mind. He still wants to participate and be here when the trial goes down. But let's let the audience know uh, so far as uh, two uh, versus four. Or oh, well, actually, the other way, four versus two. But uh, let's go to Brother Israel. What do you feel about this trial, man? And what does it mean to you being a team, you know, teammate on uh, Team Hebrew? Break it down, Dad. I think it just means a lot from um, the book that we call the Bible, which is actually the Hebrew Scriptures. And uh, being a Hebrew, you know, by faith, first and foremost, for people to neglect that heritage, the whole book is um, based upon the heritage given to Abraham. Um, Isaac and Yishak. It's a book of covenant with the Hebrews. So it just means a lot. And I want to see, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to see what um, Christianity, how that is going to play out with going against the book of the Hebrews, the Hebrews history book. And so that's, that's just pretty much what it means to me. You know, this book is more than just a religion. It's a lifestyle. It's a culture. It's a book of ancestry and family lineages. So that's what it is for me. That's why it's important. And I just want to get some clarity on, you know, their perspective of what this uh, religion of Christianity has done. And is it true to being Hebraic in nature? And is it Hebraic in nature today? All right. Once again, it's a preliminary show. Christianity on trial, defenders of the faith. This is a preliminary. We're still waiting for everybody to call in. Uh, I know devoted to Yah said he's going to be here a little later on. He's going to, he can't be here, you know, at this time, but he's going to call in a little later. And uh, also, uh, for Team Christian, we might have uh, the brother Reverend O'Brien Cartwright call in later on as well, you know. But uh, we're just going to, you know, bring them in as they call in. But uh, let's bring in the other special guest right now. Uh, okay, Amayan is here. Amayan, say hello. Hey, Shalom. Shalom, Sal. Um, shalom to all the panel members. <clears throat> shalom to all the listening audience out there. All right, what's going on, man? Hey, man, it's the second trial, brother, <laughs> that you're on. All right, so let people know, man, like, okay, you know, what are you doing here, first of all? <laughs> With a second trial. <laughs> and uh, let them know what's your purpose, man, when it comes to this, and how you feel about this one. Christianity on trial is a little bit different. What do you feel about this one? Go ahead. Um, as far as me being here, I was asked to be here to represent, you know, all, all respect to the brother that asked me to come and uh, join his team to represent um, for the truth, the real faith. Um, as far as this one is concerned, um, I think it's right on line with, with the other ones uh, from the past. We can uh, question other people of different uh, belief systems, so to speak. Um, I think this one is going to be real good so we can bring out certain things that I think people have not really heard from a different angle, um, the, way we, the way we're going to phrase our questions. So yeah, I think this one is going to be very educational for the people uh, listening in, so I I would say all people listening, uh, don't miss this one right here. Do not miss it. You're gonna learn something from this one here. It won't be like the last ones, a little kind of back and forth stuff. It's gonna be educational for you. So tune in. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, there we go. My microphone acting up a little bit again. All right, so that's uh, my on. He's back once again. The big talk you radio. All right, so let's go to. I believe we have the. Here right now, devoted to Yah. Welcome to the show. Shalom, shalom. Uh, Happy New Year's, uh, all the Israelites, Messianic Israelites, and uh, strangers and sojourners uh, joining themselves with Israel. Um, yeah, I just I wanted to come on today. I was invited uh, to come on as well. I'm looking forward to this dialogue today. Um, mm-hmm. uh, for me, I was a Christian for 11 years of my life since I was 16. And I uh, went to Christian college, got a bachelor's degree. Yeah, got a bachelor's degree in uh, Christian counseling, associates in biblical studies. And uh, uh, But after 11 years, I, I started to find some uh, extreme issues with the church. And uh, 
what I've learned to today is there are two um, heresies that are um, very, very lively in Christianity, and it's uh, replacement theology and dispensation theology, dispensationalism. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I've been able to listen to a few videos, studying a little bit on uh, Messenger of Truth, uh, but I don't want to jump too much to conclusions. I'm looking forward to today to get some clarity on what he believes, if whether he's in any of those two categories or something in between. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, just seeing where he stands. Um, I believe uh, dispensation and uh, replacement theology are heresies because what they do is they don't let scripture be congruent and uh, consistent from beginning to end. Um, They have to interpret and put their own interpretations and philosophy into the text and insert their ideas into the text, even when the text doesn't say what they're, what they're saying and uh, usually uh, diverting to the church fathers. So uh, hopefully today um, we'll be able to begin the process and uh, look forward to the, to the main trial. All right, so that's devoted to Yah. So we have all four members right here live on the Bay Toffee Radio from Team Hebrew. Uh, if you just joined in, we have Mac Thomas, we have Brother Israel, we have Amayan, and devoted to Yah. So now we're going to bring in the captain for Team Christian, Messenger of Truth. Welcome to the program. Hey, greetings to, uh, to yourself, Sal. Of course, as always, I say the same thing. It's always a privilege and an honor. Um, to, to join you uh, on your platform. It's, of course, greeting to the other team, um, Ayan, devoted to Yah, uh, Mac Thomas. I didn't get the other guy's name, um, but greetings uh, brother, to him as well. Yeah, Brother Israel. Mm-hmm. Brother Israel? Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, Christianity on trial. Well, the reality is when has Christianity not been on trial? I mean, let's just talk about 2,000 years of history. There's only been one group of people defending all this word of God from Genesis to Revelation, defending it and dying for it for the past 2,000 years. Um, When the body looks to its right and to its left, before us, behind us, there was no one else standing with us, no one. Uh, Proclaiming and and being persecuted and and dying for this great gospel and this great faith, no one. Uh, Not even the Jews. The Jews were too busy fighting for their survival, being killed because of who they are, where Christians were being killed because of what we believe. Uh, so that's fine. I mean, Christianity has been on trial for the past 2,000 years. Um, but interestingly enough, especially within the last one to maybe 300 years, we've had to stand against people who literally borrow and distort from us, which is the amazing part, especially even people who claim to be part of us. Um, Christians have stood against pseudo Christians for 2,000 years as well. Uh, claiming a title has never made the tares part of the wheat, but it's all prophecy. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, we've been doing this for two millennia. You know, it doesn't matter if they're Sabalists, Nicolaitans, you know, Gnostics, Catholics, KKK, Mormons, Moonies, Christadelphians, Christian Science, Rasta. Islam, Nation of Islam, Atheists, Hebrew Roots, Hebrew Israelites, it doesn't matter. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, But the one target has always been Christianity. Uh, The two groups of people who have suffered the most on this planet have been Jews and Christians. Uh, And as I believe, that is Satan's way of trying to avoid his own fate of being sent to hellfire. He has no Messiah. He has no Redeemer. The only way he can escape his fate is to destroy the people of promise. That is why the Jews are the most persecuted people and the Christians are the most persecuted religion, especially, and interesting enough, from people who borrow and distort from us. But, yeah, this is nothing new for us. <laughs> We're actually quite at home. We're quite used to being the underdog, so to speak. Um, as far as the team is concerned, um, Pastor Marlon Allers, he will not be able to do it um, it's, it, it was very difficult even getting Reverend O'Brien Cartwright. Um, these are men. These are my elders. These are guys who are, you know, between 60, 70 years old. Um, so they're, they're elders. Um, 
Minister Micah, some of you already know him. We call him Brother Micah. He's got a YouTube channel from Blaze to Glory. He may call in tonight. Um, he can't do it either. He's He's got a speaking revival um, that weekend. So that's fine. Um, you know, Reverend O'Brien Cartwright, it was difficult getting him as well. He's He's got to do eulogies and fill in for other pastors and, and He's doing some educational programs himself. Even right now, he's actually in a class. Um, he's overseas, so he's an hour ahead of us on East Coast. Uh, but she should be here, I would say, within the next hour. He's probably held behind. Um, but as of right now, and I have no plans on really adding to it, and I may add one person, um, but as of right now, the only true definite, of course, is myself and uh, and. Uh, uh, Reverend O'Brien Carver, and I'm pretty sure he prefers to be called minister. He has all the titles, but he prefers minister because that's what he is. He has a heart of a servant. He's been a Christian as long as I've been alive, for the most part, of roughly 45 years. So looking forward to it. Uh, Christianity on trial. It's not <laughs> O'Brien Cartwright on trial. It's not messenger or truth on trial. So looking forward to the questions I've always loved questions, even the semi-contentious ones, uh, because I enjoy talking about the Word of God. And as a Christian apologist, I really wouldn't be much of one if I wasn't accustomed to questions. So that's my intro. Looking forward to the show next Friday. All right. So we have Messenger of Truth, like uh, as you mentioned, we're going to get uh, Reverend O'Brien Cartwright, hopefully later on. Of course, as he called it, we'll bring him in. But, um, you know, we're going to later on interact with uh, everyone. Everybody's going to ask each other questions and stuff like that. But being that you're only representative right now for Team Chris, let me ask you a question. Um, like, how do you feel? You know, let the audience know. Being that it's two and, you know, it's four team members on the other team, are you going to be comfortable that night being asked these questions? Um, how do you feel about that? You know, it's two and versus four pretty much. I'm comfortable. That's not – that's not uh, – some people can – people always misinterpret and people over-exaggerate. I mean, the reality is if you want to know how a man feels, you ask the man. You don't assume and, and just formulate your own opinions. When I say I'm comfortable, it's simply because I'm comfortable. Um, 20 years I've been a Christian apologist. Um, but that's not to be a braggart. It's not to be prideful. Um, in, in most cases, they went out in twos anyway. This is why you see Mormons. Anyone who doesn't know who a Mormon is is usually the guys in the white shirt and the long black pants. They, they you know, they usually on push bikes or they're walking. Uh, they go out in twos. Um, I guess in my head, not purposely, but in my head as I thought about it afterwards, I was like, oh man, too bad, you know, uh, Pastor Marlon Allers can't be here because he's literally like a walking, talking. Um, Bible thesaurus, like he memorizes scriptures, he, he's able to regurgitate book, chapter, and verse, and stuff like that, because he's taken the time to memorize. I've never really done that. I just know what the scripture said. <clears throat> but I was thinking along the lines of Paul, Barnabas, being the two elders, uh, and Timothy and Mark being the two intermediates. So I was looking at myself and uh, uh, Minister Micah as sort of like the two intermediates with uh, Reverend O'Brien Cartwright and Pastor Marlon Allers as the elders. Uh, but, you know, when Paul and Barnabas had their disagreement over Mark, you know, they, they went their own separate ways for a little while. It was just, you know, Paul and Timothy. It was just Barnabas and Mark. So I'm I'm okay with it because it's it's been two by twos and four by fours for a very, very long time, two millennia. So I'm 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 comfortable with it. Right, but the the thing it. is the, but but the yeah. thing is, Sal, it's it's like what I said to somebody. I don't know who it was. Um, the, the the key is, you know, the, the honest and important thing is that I make the effort. You see what I'm saying? I, I make the effort to actually build the team, uh, which is what I did. But you're, we're talking about men of the cloth. We're not talking about YouTubers and, you know, folk who really don't, are not really responsible for a flock you know, these men do eulogies, these men prepare messages, these men fill in for other pastors when they're absent. These men are called to the hospital three, four in the morning because somebody's son stuck their toe. You know, these these men are called to prisons. So it's 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 very difficult 
getting these sort of caliber of men to to commit. And my attitude was and still is the flock comes first. So even if they did commit, but if, if somebody in the flock, meaning somebody in the body of Christ needs their help, they need to go take care of that person first. This YouTube stuff and social media stuff, it can wait. Um, but yeah, I, I made the honest effort. I probably have one other person. And as you already know, for me, it's it's got to be people who are of the same spirit, same mind. You know, there's no way I'm going to have a preterist at my side. There's no way I'm going to have a Calvinist at my side. I heard our devoted to Yah uh, talking about replacement theology and dispensationalism. Sure, of course, I'd love to talk about it. I'm not going to go into any, any detail here, but let's save it for the show. You know, I would definitely love to talk about, you know, Christian versus pseudo-Christian doctrines and principles. Some people in the church may believe certain things. I may not necessarily agree with certain traditional teachings. Um, it doesn't mean that I think my brethren are going to hell or that they're absolutely wrong. Traditional teaching, some of it is wrong. I agree, but it's not a violation of anything, of any sort of moral code. And the things that are a violation of moral codes, well, we don't accept them as Christian anyway. So that's my uh, three cents. All right, so we're going to come back to you, Master of Truth. I know you're the only one representing right now, but hopefully we get uh, Reverend O'Brien call right later on. Uh, team Christianity. Again, the number is D19527623. Now I gotta go back to Team Hebrew right about now. Let me go back to Team Hebrew and uh, you know, still a couple questions out there. And we appreciate the audience out there that's been in. And again, if you have any questions, audience, three one nine five two seven six two three nine. You can call it via phone, call it via Skype. And uh, press number one and we'll enter the conversation. Uh let me go to uh let me go to Amayan real quick. All right, Amayan, I got a you know a little question I got to throw out there for you. Uh, what do you feel when it comes to Christianity? Uh, what do you feel like um, uh, Christians don't understand when it comes to the Hebrew Israelites? Want to put some things out there? You can go ahead. Um, thank you, Sal. Um, I think Christians uh, in general don't understand the Bible. Period. What it's saying at all? I think they read things and they think it's saying that. But they don't go deep enough to really get the real meaning behind what it's saying. Because things are spoken in different ways um, in the Bible. Certain things are in parables. Certain things in uh, allegory. You know, certain things in uh, Hebrewisms. All these things uh, play a part in your interpretation of what the text is saying. And I think they, they read certain things and thinking that it is, it is literal, saying, uh, literally saying that. When certain things are speaking... Um, in, in metaphors or, or, or simile, and so uh, that that is uh, contributing to the misunderstanding of the Bible. When clear scriptures tells you that uh, it's not saying that, you know what I'm saying. So I I just think that they they don't go deep enough to really try to find what it's saying. I I, I don't see them really trying to go back and learning the Aramaic, learning the Hebrew, or even going really far into the Greek text at all. They just kind of really stay in the English. They don't do no background um, history of the culture and different things like that, you know, they basically just do um, world history instead of uh, Hebrew and Israelite history, where this thing originated from, where it came from, who, you know, who started it, really, what, do, what this man was really about. So I think they just go off of what another man say. They, they, they use a lot of commentary for their interpretation. You know, what, what another man said, this man said that, that man said this. So they don't really come from the text from a real Hebraic standpoint. So that's why I think they don't really understand what the book is saying. All right, we're going to go down the line, and of course, you know, we're going to go to everybody and get their answer. The number is 319-527-6239. Let's go to Mac Thomas, uh, the captain for the team, Hebrew. Uh, same question. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Amiyan. It's not even, to me, it, it's, it's like it, it's an insult, you know, coming out of Christianity and coming to this understanding. It's like a lot of things we've been told oh, you know, it's okay to do this now. It's okay to eat pork and shrimp. It's okay to, um, uh, you know, sleep with your uh, wife while she's on her flower. I've literally talked to Christians who said that this is okay, who said it was okay to sleep with your wife while she's on her flower. I've literally talked to a person who um, acknowledges a lot of the things in these laws that are for our good and have always been for our good, even Joe Osteen, for, for goodness sake, acknowledges that what is said in the Torah is for good, and yet 
you have Christians out here who will call Joel Osteen a false Christian all up and down, but they will not acknowledge that what he said that when he clearly called that um uh the the dietary law was for our good and that he that the most high understands our body, why would he throw something like that away to heal us to to keep us you know in right standing, even everything that he teaches us is for us to learn not to be um uh, not to conform to the things of this world. That's why he gave us a set apart law. So, you know, I, I, I say this, Christians don't understand nothing, whether it's 2000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, they cannot understand something that's been given that has not been given to them to understand and that they're not willing to understand because it doesn't fall into their paradigm of what they've been taught by the Greeks or Romans. Oh, okay. Once again, it's uh, the preliminary show for Christianity on trial, defenders of the faith. We're going down the line and asking everybody from all the teams certain questions, and I'm gonna let them dialogue actually a little later on. I'm gonna have a little timer set up, and uh, I'll probably give everybody like ten minutes to dialogue with each you know individual. But uh, let's go to Brother Israel. Same question: uh, What do you feel uh, Christians don't understand when it comes to the Hebrew Israelites? Okay. He come back to me. I got a crown, baby. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. All right, let's go to the border to ya. Yeah, yeah, the border to ya. Hi, right, Shalom, Shalom. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you got. You lied, Claire. Yep, you lied, okay. Claire. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, uh, the biggest issue uh, for me with, with, with Christianity is uh, is the the abolishing of the of the law, the law of God. Uh, which is the word of God. Uh, Romans chapter 8 says that the carnal mind is against the law of God and uh, can't please God. So I think there's a difference. I don't judge every single Christian. Um, I actually do believe some Christians are saved. Um, I, I, it's the teachers that I have a problem with, uh, especially the teachers that are, are, um, are educated and are taught um, regarding the abolishment of uh, some of the Torah precepts. And statutes uh, That is what I have the biggest problem with And I think it is the issue um, In the church And which opens the doors for doctrines And traditions of men uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's it's really Disheartening to see Christianity uh, From its inception uh, In the first century To distance itself from its Hebraic roots um, Which their Messiah uh, Who they claim to be their Messiah um, Yahusha HaMashiach, blessed be a set apart name um, They call him Jesus uh, Was a Hebrew <laughs> He was a Jew um, uh, Descended from the line of David And uh, Christianity has, since the first century Has distanced themselves Aggressively uh, More aggressively to present day um, with, uh, with the Hebraic roots of the faith um, distancing themselves from, from Israel, from Judaism, from the culture, uh, from the statutes, the ordinances, the way of life. And um, it, is, it is, I consider it the great falling away, um, which Messiah said he would not return and there'd be a great falling away first. And I believe that this is the great falling away, that people will get further and further away from the word of God, Yahuwah, blessed be a set apart name. And they would they would have itching ears, uh, you know. And I think Christianity, uh, and, and Christianity is not a hundred percent wrong. I don't preach that. Um, I don't believe that. Uh, Christianity has taught me a lot of good. Um, you can only borrow from what has dominated, and in some cases have uh, forcefully dominated um, the religions of the world. I mean, you got Freemasons, you got Christians coming over to the United States enslaving natives and um, African-Americans uh, or Negroes or Ibus, whatever you want to call it, this is done by Christianity um, as well as Islam. Um, so when you have a world that is dominated by a false religion, of course, you're not going to hear of the underground true believers who have died and been persecuted by the Christians. 
um, which Catholicism isn't even the first. It's, it, it predates that. It's the Greek Orthodox, Egyptian Orthodox churches, which predates Catholicism. And uh, in the church fathers, I mean, I go through on my YouTube channel, I go through uh, some of the church fathers regarding the Sabbath and how they, how they butcher, um, how they butcher the understanding of the Sabbath and are unable to quote scripture, but the church fathers are easily able to, um, you know, go on long dialogues of their philosophy and their thoughts and, um, but not back it up with scripture. So, um, you know, starting all the way in the first century, um, nothing is hidden. Uh, praise Yah for the technology, for the internet. Uh, we live in the age of technology where all darkness is being exposed, uh, which is a fulfillment of prophecy that knowledge will increase in the last days. So this is why we're seeing the awakening happen. This is why we're seeing Christianity, um, you know, all the dirt being exposed, all the stuff that they hid under the rug, um, is no longer able to be hidden under the rug. And, uh, it's only going to continue and, uh, until the day Yahusha comes back and we will officially see both Gentiles and Israelites fully, fully obeying voluntarily and some by force. <laughs> uh, but those volunteering to obey from their heart, we're going to see that beautiful picture actually manifesting fully with Israel being restored back into their land. So this is just part of the, you know, part of the laboring in the gospel, laboring in the good news of the restoration of Israel, which salvation is for Israel first and then to the Gentile. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think the biggest problem with Christianity is their hatred for the Torah. Uh, not 100% of the Torah, because obviously they embrace many, uh, a lot of it, uh, but it's, uh, it's a buffet for them. They pick and choose uh, what they want without any scriptural interpretation, uh, any precept to really strongly back up what they affirm. All right, that's devoted to Yah, representing Team Hebrew. All right, so we got to go to Team Christian, uh, the Team Captain, Messenger of uh, Truth. He is here representing. And then the number is 319 This is promotion for the upcoming show, Friday, April 26th, Christianity on Trial, Defenders of the Faith. That's Christianity on Trial, Defenders of the Faith. We appreciate the family that's tuning in via phone, via Skype. I see you have a lot of people tuning into the program, and uh, we appreciate you. And we're still waiting for uh, one more member. What team Christian to call in? As soon as he calls in, we're going to bring him in. But let's go to Messenger of Truth. Of course, you know, I've got to ask you the same question, but in reverse, of course. <laughs> what do you feel the Hebrew Israelites are not understanding when it comes to Christianity? And also, you're going to elaborate or, you know, comment on whatever you heard just now. Go ahead. Uh, I'll comment first <clears throat> because of the three people you asked so far, I haven't actually heard an answer to the question. If you ask, you know, what do you think Christians misunderstand about Hebrew Israelites? But all I heard was, this is my personal feeling towards Christianity. Rather than, you know, I wish Christians would consider this, or I wish Christians would hear us when we say X, Y, Z. But I didn't, I didn't hear either one of them actually answer the actual question. But what I did hear was their position and their beliefs against Christianity. Uh, so I'll try to actually answer the question as it's been asked. What do I think uh, Hebrew, Isra Hebrew Israelites misunderstand about Christians? Uh, oh, there's a lot. I guess we, I, I, you, we, they've already answered it. <laughs> the three who've answered so far, they've already actually answered the questions. Um, it, it's the same old thing, the law food, Sabbath, Sunday, Trinity, deity of Jesus, you know, um, uh, separation from Hebraic roots, you know, the, the end time prophecies. It, by the way, it was Paul who said, there's a great falling away, not the Messiah. Um, but, yeah, so we, we know, we know all about, that's about the church. We know that the salt has to lose its flavor. None of this stuff is, 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 is a surprise to us. The attention of the Jews has to increase. The intention of the Christians must decrease in the last days. That's just a fact. None of this stuff is new. We see the false Christianity. We see the showboating and, and, and stuff as well. We see that. We have our own private conversations about certain leaders and even certain people in our individual churches that we are completely against. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, some things that can come up will actually agree. Like, yeah, we don't like that either. If you're talking to a grounded, true Christian, um, you know, in the Western world, it's, well, I mean, I'm multicultural. You know, I've lived in other countries. I've been to tiny churches that have some powerful, powerful, biblically based preaching. Over here in the West, you have things called mega churches. A lot of it is about showboating. I mean, ever since they created, and I'm sure it's going to come up somewhere, the 501c3, but ever since they created this and they saw that it was money involved, well, here come the wolves. Here come the leopards. Here come the lions. Here come the eagles. Here come the bears. All of them trying to become preachers because they see it's a way of making money. When I did my first master's degree, I'll never forget it. This is started in 2000, so almost 20 years ago. In my business communications class, my business communications professor was a professional speaker. She had her pen from the state of Georgia to prove it. She said she would have rather have been a preacher. And you know what her reason was? Because she can make more money. Now, you let that sink in for a second. She's not doing it because she loves the Lord. She's not doing it because she understands those sort of positions of leadership require sacrifice. And, and, and people always look at the threshold. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's popularity or it's people serving you or, or honoring your name. But they don't know about the phone calls 4 o'clock in the morning. They don't know about the person who's spitting on your 1999 car just because it's a Mercedes-Benz. And a preacher is not supposed to drive a Mercedes-Benz. They don't know about the hate mail. They don't know about the tears. They don't know about the spears that are thrown. And we have to pretend that the spears aren't thrown. They don't know about that stuff. They just know about less than 10 pastors in some sort of mega church. Because it's on television. Or it's on YouTube. But when we start dealing with the mom and pop Christians who suffer for this gospel, all of a sudden they have nothing to say. Because they are unchurched, they're ill-informed, and they're not exposed. But when you start dealing with true Christians who are in Christendom, well, the stories turn different. And then when you find us actually agreeing with some of the things that are said, but we've seen this before some of these New Age groups even existed. You know, we are the ones who actually have said the end-time prophecies are the great falling away. Falling away from what? From truth and doctrine. I am old enough. I'm not talking about something I read on a web page. I'm talking about something I lived through and I saw. I am old enough to remember a church where Christians could not go to the movie theaters. That is a fact. I am old enough to remember where Christians could not wear makeup. That is a fact. I am old enough to remember when the women could not wear pants. That is a fact. Now, those are not even like moral sins. But I'm also old enough when even divorce was like a big no-no for the church. Now, you, you can't have that. But at the same time, I'm also old enough to remember a global culture that hated homosexual, homosexuals. I mean, there, I'm from, well, I'm not going to say where I'm from, but, you know, my British heritage, my background, they talked about killing homosexuals in songs. You go to any one of the islands and ask people who know reggae, you know, they're like, yeah, reggae music is always used to be. Talking about killing Bati boys then. You see, but cultures have changed. Times have changed. We know the end time prophecies. We know there has to be a great falling away. From what? From truth and doctrine. I am old enough to have been witnessing that in my lifetime. We know that the salt has to lose its flavor. What happens to salt that doesn't have any taste? Why would you keep tasteless salt in your cupboards? It's good for nothing. It would be like eating air. You only keep salt because it's salty. You, you use it to flavor your food. But Jesus is saying, what happens to the salt when it loses its flavor? It's thrown out and it's trampled underfoot. And I see that happening with the Western church. It has lost its influence. Revelation talks about certain churches. It talks about the church who thinks it's rich. But it says, yeah, you, you, you have a reputation for being rich. You have a reputation for being lively. But you don't understand that you're poor naked, and ashamed. It also talks about the, the church that, um, uh, that thinks it's alive, but it's saying, hey, but you don't understand you're actually dead. I look at that as the American church, the Western church. 
I really do. I always have, at least for the past 15, 20 years. And of course, it has to get worse. Prophecy doesn't say anything about a waking up. Prophecy talks about religious deception in the last days where people will turn from the truth and they will turn to new winds and fables, new doctrines, new ideologies, new cults. It don't say anything about a waking up. The prophecy show there's going to be a great falling away. So for me, as a Christian, I have to look at these new winds and new ideologies and say, yeah, you are a puppet of prophecy and you don't even realize it. So what I think that Hebrew Israelites don't understand about Christianity is everything that they just said. Um, wow. I, don't, I, don't see them, I don't see them understanding the law or, or, or why the, the, the laws were given for certain foods or what the Sabbath is all about. They, they, they don't even understand how the church started and continued on Sundays, clearly seen in the scriptures as well as the first, second, and third century writings of the early church. It just goes on and on. The Trinity, all of that stuff, I think there is a misunderstanding on their part. So everything that they said, that really is my answer. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, you know, in a few minutes, of course, I'm going to give everybody like seven minutes to dialogue with each other. It's, you know, the little dialogue one-on-one, of course. Uh, with uh, you know, it's only one person here representing Team Christian. <laughs> so hopefully we get uh, my brother... Reverend, oh, matter of fact, if you're out there, brother, because we have a lot of people on the phone lines, just press number one, Brian Cartwright. If you're out there, you got to press number one. We're going to bring you in a conversation. But, you know, I'm hey, gonna, Can you hear me, Sal? I can hear you. Can you hear yeah. me? I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, because I, I, I sent him a, um, a WhatsApp. So, okay. And I know, he had, I know he hasn't received it, because in the WhatsApp, you have the two gray arrows, like the tick check marks. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah right. But they mm-hmm. only, the only turn blue once, you know. They've been viewed, so I know he hasn't seen my um my thing yet. Okay, I'll look out for him. No problem, I'll look out for him. I just got one more quick question for you, and before I start the dialogue session, and it's going to be only like seven minutes each, but uh, do you want to reveal to the audience, and you don't have to, it's up to you, like uh like what's your denomination, and how you feel about how do you feel about denominations? Period. When it comes to Christianity, you can put that out there if you like. Okay. Well, I don't really label myself. A Christian is a Christian is a Christian. What pseudo-Christians and false Christians do has nothing to do with us. You know, the scriptures do say tares will grow with the wheat. It never says the tares are the wheat. So what false Christians do does not represent Christianity. It actually misrepresents it. But for people, because I know how the human mind works, if I have to label myself, I will label myself as Pentecostal. And you've got to understand, like I mentioned, I'm multicultural. So in America, when you say Pentecostal, it's for some people that's handling snakes and other crazy stuff. Where I'm from, snakes don't even exist. So that was never an issue. But Pentecostal, because I teach, I hold to the teachings of true Christianity since the beginning. Um, the other way you can describe me is Protestant, because I protest against but all, I am utterly against the Catholic institution. I know who the enemy of Israel is. I know who the enemy of the church is. So I'm a Protestant, Pentecostal, Zionist Christian. I am a Zionist, not in the sense that you know, this Western understanding of Zionism. I'm a Zionist in the sense that I know the land belongs to the Jews and no one else. Sarah was the first Zionist. She told Abraham, cast out that bondwoman and her son because Ishmael must not have an inheritance with our son Isaac. So all intents and purposes, Sarah herself, she was the first Zionist. So by me saying that I am a Zionist, what I'm saying is that the land belongs to the Jews and the Jews only, no one else. So Protestant, Pentecostal, um, Zionist. Now, as far as my feelings towards the denominations overall, that is, I'll use the word needed because I can't think of any other word. For people nowadays, when somebody says a Christian, when I was young, I didn't care. A Christian was a Christian is a Christian. Even sinners would say, hey, you, you know, if a Christian is not supposed to cuss, or a Christian is not supposed to go to the nightclubs, or a Christian is not supposed to have, you know, fornication or adultery. Even 
sinners knew what a Christian was. Nowadays, in America, I mean, what is an ev evangelist? People don't even know. Uh, what is a liberal? What <laughs> is a Christian? There's so many people who claim titles nowadays, and they have no true repentance, no love or service of the Lord. It's, it's just religiosity. In this culture, people go to church and stuff because it's something to do on a Sunday. But during the rest of the week, or Saturday, but during the rest of the week, they're just, they're just hypocrites. They're just living their lives in sin. No relationship with the Lord. Um, but denominations, I think, are needed in 2019 because there's too many false stuff out there. And I say, yeah, let's have the denominations because at least I can look at this particular denomination and say they promote homosexuality. They have nothing to do with the church. Or I look at this particular denomination. They believe Jesus is an angel. They have nothing to do with the church. Or I look at this particular one. Say they're after Ellen G. White or they're after Joseph E. Smith or they're after Pastor Russell or they're after Jim Jones or they're after, um, um, you know, John Calvin or, or, or they're after Sun Young Moon. They're after these men who created their ideologies within the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries. Stuff didn't exist with the early church. So with them, we just cast them off. So in some ways, it's, it's, it allows us to identify who's who and who's not. Otherwise, a denomination means nothing to me as long as they hold on to the principles of true Christianity. Number one, you're called by the Spirit towards repentance. Christianity is not a choice. It's a calling. Number two, they have repented of their sin. In other words, they've turned from their sin. They've turned from the evil pleasures of the world. Number three, they remain in Jesus, even as Jesus instructed. That is a present participle. It means to continue. You don't go to the altar, say some heartless prayer, and then walk out the building and living a life in sin. No, you have to truly convert and change and remain. Now, baptism, that can be up for discussion. Some people think baptism, baptism is critical. The thief on the cross was not baptized, and he was promised paradise that very day. So baptism, yeah, that's something that needs to be discussed. Um, the virgin birth. Obviously, if they're a true Christian, they believe in the virgin birth. The deity of Jesus. If they're a Christian, they believe in the deity of, of Jesus. If they are a Christian, then by default, they are a Trinitarian. So as long as they hold on to the true Christian values, and I don't care if they're Baptist. I don't care if they're uh, ecopistical. I don't care if they're, you know, Amy or non-denominational or even certain Seventh-day Adventists, as long as they hold on to the core teachings of true Christianity, then they are my brethren, and I am theirs. It's the people who go outside of the true teachings of Christianity. That's who we have a problem with. Ask any Muslim. A Muslim will tell you if, if somebody does not adhere, I think it's called the seven pillars. If somebody does not adhere to the seven pillars of Islam, they are not a true Muslim. Many true Muslims call for the beheadness, meaning having Louis Farrakhan, Minister Louis Farrakhan, they say he needs to be beheaded because he is a kafir and it's shirk. So even they would say, no, that if they don't adhere to the true fundamental teachings, they have nothing to do with us. And Christianity has been saying that for 2,000 years. If they are against primary teachings then they have nothing to do with Christianity. So the denomination, the name of the denomination doesn't matter to me. The country, the race, uh, the color of their skin means nothing. As long as they adhere to the true teachings of Christianity, they are my brother. But when they go against those fundamental things, they have nothing to do with us. Drinking, whether they drink alcohol, meaning wine or not, that's irrelevant. Whether they eat pork or not, that's irrelevant. We're, we'll get into that, I'm sure, on the show. Uh, but uh, simple things like that, no. But when it comes to the, the, the biblically-based things, even morality, like lying, murder, stealing, nah, they probably could be a, a Christian, but they're, they're, they've got some serious rebellious issues they need to work up. So that's, that's my spill as far as, you know, um, denominations. But denomination, Sal, has been around truly since the very beginning, since Paul's lifetime. Paul would be like, hey, why are you people saying that you follow me? And then another group of you say that you follow Apollos. Aren't Paul and Apollos, aren't we both servants of the Lord? So why are you saying you're following us? You should be following Jesus. So this denominational thing has basically been a threat, or not really a threat, but a problem of the church for 2,000 years, even in the lifetime of Paul. 
but the reality is, you know, the gates of hell have not prevailed. It, it's, <laughs> it's gotten so much bigger than then uh, than it was back then. You know, it, it, it cannot prevail. The church has stood against giants, uh, governments, military groups, uh, murders, mass persecution. And I heard what somebody said, and, you know, they think that, you know, Christianity, it's time for Christianity to be cast out the window like Jezebel. Um, and I'm like, well, <laughs> that hasn't been done in 2,000 years. But it would be interesting to see. It certainly can't be done in one conversation or two or three. If it hasn't been done over the past 2,000 years, it ain't going to happen on Debate Talk for you. All right, so that's Messenger of Truth right there, representing Team Christian, right on Debate Talk for you. So what I'm going to do is... uh. I'm going to let the brothers respond real quick, and after that, I'm going to set up the little dialogue. You know, it's going to be like seven minutes per, you know, per person. And uh, I'm still looking for the, the brother, but I'm going to look on the line. I see somebody on the line. I'm going to check it out. But uh, let me get the responses from uh, Team Hebrew from what they heard. And uh, let me see. Let me go to Amayan. Go ahead. You can respond to some of the things you heard. Go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you, Sal. Again, as I said, they just don't understand when you be answering the question because he claimed – I didn't, I didn't answer the question. Now, where would you go to find out about a Hebrew Israelite? See, he don't understand about a Hebrew Israelite because he don't understand the Bible, like I said. The Bible is written by Hebrew Israelites to Hebrew Israelites for Hebrew Israelites about Hebrew Israelites. If you don't understand the Bible, you don't understand a Hebrew Israelites. Their whole faith, their whole beginnings Everything they lost, their culture, you name it, it's all contained in the Bible. So the reason why, again, the, the, the question was answered. You don't understand the Bible. That's why you don't understand Hebrews, okay? That is clear to understand, all right? And, again, he, he jumps on here and he said, Sarah is the first Zionist. How crazy is that? The word Zionist, first of all, is not even in the Bible. If you have to Google Zionist or Zionism, it goes back to these fake Jews over there, lying about who lying about who they are, stealing our identity and our culture. Nothing in this Bible fits them, okay? No prophecy fits them. Description doesn't fit them, okay? According to the Bible, when the real Hebrew Israelites go back to that land, there's going to be peace over there. It's in Ezekiel. There ain't no peace over there. They are not the real Israelites. If the nerve of this God to say that Sarah is the third Zionist, that's just so crazy. Proof of my point that he does not understand the Bible again. It says to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because that there is no light in them. Can he show us a Zionist in this Bible? It's not there, brother. We are, we are Israelites. That's who we are. The Most High ain't, ain't, ain't calling us no, no Zionists. They call us Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, brother. We're Israelites. That's what we are. Now, as far as Christ's followers, Christ's followers didn't call themselves Christians. They called them that in Antioch first. They didn't call themselves Christians. It's not in the Bible where they call themselves Christians. Paul says, I am a Jew. I'm a, I'm a Hebrew of the tribe of, he said, I'm an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. He called himself an Israelite. He didn't call himself no Christian, okay? This, this guy is confused again, proving my point that he does not know the Bible. There is a difference between someone calling you something and you calling yourself something, okay? Call me what I call myself. Don't call me what some other man call me. Call me what I call myself, Israelite. They can't understand that simple fact right there in the Bible that these men who died for the truth, the real faith, called themselves Israelites. They think these men are Christians or call themselves Christians, and they didn't. Okay? Now, I don't want to be long with it. I'm going to end it there and have somebody else come on. But, again, this is the problem, that they do not understand the Bible. All right. Okay. My mic is back on. All right. Once again, the number is 319-527-6239. Keep in mind, y'all, uh, we have four people from Team Hebrew, and we only have one person so far for Team Christian. So uh, we're still waiting for another caller, possibly may call him. But if not, you're going to hear him definitely, you know, the whole team for Team Christian 
on Friday, April 26th. That's Friday, April 26th. This is a, this is a promotional show for that show, uh, Christianity on Trial Defenders of the Faith. So we appreciate the uh, people that's tuning in. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. And, of course, being that it's only message of truth, I'm going to have to let them respond after we get all the comments, of course, from Team Hebrew. And then we'll set the dialogue with each individual. Uh, it's going to be seven minutes each. And after that, we're going to pretty much wrap it up, you know. But uh, let's get another uh, response. Let's go to my brother Israel. See if he's, he's, he's good now. <laughs> you good, brother Israel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to be really brief. Um, Yahusha, the son of Yah, he said, the scripture cannot be broken. So when we look at this this kitab, the scriptures, right, it says that um, prophecies must come to pass. There's a people that's going to be established in the land again. There was a people who Yahusha, the son of Yah, was talking to who believed on him. He told them that they would be scattered into all nations. And we see that this is the fulfillment of the prophecy because we have the apostles writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, to the strangers scattered abroad. But So um, that's just pretty much what I want to say. The scripture cannot be broken, and um, we're going we're gonna to expose that. I believe everybody on this team is going to expose that the scripture can't be broken, and um, I'm, I'm ready to see it. All right, let's go to the vote of Tia. Yeah, you can respond to some of the things you heard. Yeah. Uh, the not monitor. available right now. Not available okay. right now. I got to come back in like five minutes. I'm being dismissed. No problem. I got you, brother. All right, so let's go to Mac. Let's go to Mac. Yeah, go as far. <laughs> yeah, this is. Um, yeah, this is this is where the problem comes in. I mean, so none of us have answered the question, even though we're outlining how. I, at least I, I, I'm pretty sure I have, why Christianity will never understand what we base our foundation upon. Because, see, the issue is is that Christianity, just like I pointed out when I mentioned the Jezebel metaphor, Christianity is full of witchcraft. I believe that. I believe that it's full of witchcraft for the simple fact that what he just said Okay, because I I I want to know that he he he's saying that he's a Pentecostal Protestant. Show me Pentecostal Protestant in this book that's mentioning a particular group, written by a particular group, just like Amiyan has spoken. These scriptures mention a law that should be kept. He's mentioning that he follows the Mashiach, which. I'm confused because when did the Mashiach say that the dietary law was going to be done away with? When did the Mashiach say not to keep the Sabbath? When did the Mashiach say not to do uh, any of the Torah? When did he do that? How can you say you stand upon a foundation of a man who kept the law, who kept Passover, who kept tabernacles, who kept all these things, and when you say you follow him, none of these things you keep. You'll keep Christmas. You'll keep Easter. You got Easter Sunday. You'll keep pastor's appreciation, but you won't keep the words that are written in this book. And that's the issue when you when there's like you you when there's a talk about this two thousand year old hi- history. It ain't old enough. This was already established from the very beginning, and it still stands. And that's why, unless you come to the knowledge of the Amat, and you keep having this Greek and Roman mindset, what they taught you, this Greek philosophy, this th- Greek theology, you're never going to understand why the Mashiach says the things that he does. You're never going to understand the things that's being spoken of in the culture of this book because it does not pertain to you. With that, I am. All right, so let's go to Messenger of Truth, who's representing uh, Team Christian. And after that, you're going to get the dialogue going. Uh, so you can respond to everything that you've heard. I know you heard a lot, but you can respond <laughs> as much as you can. And uh, we'll go <laughs> to the dialogue later. Got it. 
All right. Uh, yeah, there's plenty I could say. Um, what was said. Um, something about uh, Christians never call themselves Christians in the Bible. Well, eh, well, there have been many different sections of Judaism. Um, you don't see Essenes in scriptures, but they existed. So to say that the Christians never called themselves Christians, that is absolutely false. Um, the reality is the Christians, the title evolved. Originally, the people were thought to have been basically converts into Judaism. They didn't just, <laughs> just appear overnight and say, we're Christians. Uh, they were called followers of Christ, people of the way. Um, but at first, they were just thought as being just regular converts into Judaism. And then they were looked at as a sect of Judaism. But the more the Christians preached their doctrine, the more Orthodox Judaism began to realize, hey, no, they, they, they're, they're centering a lot of things on, on this Messiah guy and grace um, and not really the law of Moses, et cetera, et cetera. So when they were finally called Christians, that was meant as an insult. Now, these people, they're followers of that, that guy, Jesus, Christianos. They're followers of Christ, Christ followers. That was meant as an insult. It's like me saying you're a follower of that gay guy over there. It's the same thing. It was meant as an insult, but for the Christians, the attitude was culturally and universally, you know what, they're right. We are followers of Jesus, Christianos. We are that. And so the name stuck. And from then, on and on and on it goes, we see it in first century extra-biblical writing. We see it in the writings of uh, Hebrew historians like Tacitus. We see it in Hebrew historian writings like uh, uh, Joseph ben Matthias, whom you know as Flavius Josephus. They all wrote about Christians, Christ followers. Of course it was the title by then. And of course the Christians had accepted it as their title in the first century. We see it all through first century writings. Um, so that was, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's historically laughable is what it is. Um, and then the part about, you know, it's, it's written by Hebrews. Well, first it's Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelites. First of all, I should say, I don't believe anybody on the other side is a Hebrew. But this is not the time for that discussion. Um, we're supposed to be having that discussion with someone else, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Twice with two people who challenged to a debate, but both of them backed off from their own challenge. Um, but that's, it's not about Hebrews on trial. So my personal feelings to that is irrelevant. But there certainly is no such thing as a, quote, Hebrew Israelite, unquote, in any ancient literature. Not biblically, not any of the, the Sohar, not any of the Midrashi, not in the Talmud, not in any of the dead or alive rabbis. No one writes Hebrew Israelite. That is a new age belief system. Um, some other stuff was said I can't remember. Um, you know, some other stuff like, yeah, it's not for you because you're not a Hebrew. Got news for you. Got news for you. According to your cult, I am, well, your belief system, sorry. According to your belief system, I am very much a Hebrew. If you think African Americans are Hebrews, my great-grandfather is from Chicago. He is my father's father's father. So whatever you assume about me, you probably should not assume. Not live. <laughs> not live, because it's too easy to respond live. My father's father's father is African American. So according to your beliefs, I am exactly what you claim to be. So saying that I cannot understand it, well, that just killed that argument if I am a so-called Hebrew Israelite, but I am not. I am a Christian. That is the only title I need. I identify with the church I identify with the body of Christ. I identify under my Lord and Savior, and that is it. But to say that, oh, if you're not Hebrew, you can't understand, that's, well, I mean, tell that to Jethro. 
Tell that to Mekisedek. Tell that to Abraham, Abel, Job, and all these other non-Hebrews who are saints and will be in that uncountable number. So saying that people can't understand the Bible because they're not Jews, that, that is, that's not even the teaching of Israel. Israel never taught that. It doesn't exist in, in any ancient Israel writings. That's just something, again, as I said earlier, a new age, new wind, new belief. But it's absolutely not true. Um, a lot of stuff like that has been said tonight, and I'm just sitting here like, well, let's, we'll find out in the show. <laughs> we'll find out in the show if, if we do know or we don't know. I have no animosity or hatred, I should say, to any of you. I'm hoping, I am hoping, yes, I have my personal opinions, but I am hoping that, and Sal knows my nature. Just look at my records. The people that I've shared platforms with on Debate Talk for you, none of them have been scrubs. None of them have been foul-mouthed, uh, obviously hypocritical, people talking about the law they don't know or keep. All the men, well, 90% of the men that I have shared a platform with have been decent, mature individuals. So I'm hoping the show can be deep. I'm hoping it will be challenging. Um, I'm hoping it will be influential. I heard Amelian say, hey, don't miss this show, don't miss this show. Well, that's good, you know, that's good. But I'm looking forward to the actual show, but that's, that's based on... Some of the stuff that I caught uh, for these these um, these three so far. I don't know if you want to go back to devoted for Yah or devoted to Yah Sal because I don't think he had a chance to speak. Yeah, yeah, I got to go back to him. He just you know see if he's available. Well, you know, whatever you're done though, okay. whatever you're done. Yeah, that's that's all I can really remember. It was it was a lot. And and to be honest, I'll I'll tell you my nature. I'll have to ignore the fluff. I have to ignore the fluff and just listen for. You know anything that I can sink my teeth into because if not, that's that's how shows take a long time. Some people have the need to refute everything that comes out of somebody's mouth. I don't really have that need. I just listen. I try to listen for the the the, the, the meaningful things that I can really talk about without dealing with the fluff. Uh, so some things I guess I'll have to ignore, um, but you know either way, I'm I'm still looking forward to it. And by the way, I do see that. Uh, Reverend O'Brien Cartwright, that he has texts because they're blue now, so I don't know if he's trying to call in yet or if he's having trouble, but I do see he received my WhatsApp messages. All right, so I'll be on the lookout for him, of course. So let him know to press number one. Remind him, press number one. Uh, oh, yeah, let me do that. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right, so let's go to um, the vote of TI, and after that, Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah my mic went down a little bit. Yeah, you can respond. Uh, uh, ahead, uh, uh, yeah, I apologize. Um, just getting out of class here for the apprenticeship that I'm part of uh, on my ride home on Bluetooth. So, uh, yeah, one of the things I just wanted to say, um, I, I feel like... I feel like I'm being bunched up with a group of people. Uh, the very thing that Messenger of Truth doesn't want to happen to him. And I feel like I came on here and I said, you know, I, I plan on asking him questions uh, because I don't want to jump to conclusions on and bundle him up with a certain group of people. Uh, but I just want to let you know a lot of things that you said, Messenger of Truth, I don't agree with either. Uh, me and you have a lot in common. Um, so I, w I would like to not be bundled up with uh, everybody you hear on here. Um, I speak for myself. That's my disclaimer. Um, but uh, um, my, my, my response remains the same. I mean, unless I misunderstood the question, Sal, unless you want to re-ask the question, Sal, do you think I didn't answer the question right? Um, no, you didn't. I feel like, okay. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the biggest problem I, I have with Christianity, and I think we're misunderstood. Um, we're misunderstood you know, because of the understanding you guys have. So uh, we embrace the whole scripture, again, Genesis to Revelation, as a congruent book um, that builds upon each other and lets us know when things are changing and um, lets us know if anything needs to be added or taken away. Uh, I think the book makes, it, makes itself clear. God is good like that. He, um, you know, 
any 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 issues we need to find out, we can we can figure it out. But um, I wanted to know about Messenger Messenger of Truth stance on on whether he's a replacement theology or dispensationalist. And I thought I heard him say he doesn't want to get into detail about that here. I feel like uh, I thought we were going to have some transparency in here uh, to try to have some dialogue. So um, I hope that you know when when it's my chance to talk with him that. Uh, he wouldn't just be closed, uh, just holding off just for the official uh, trial. Um, other than that, uh, I'm ready to I'm ready to get started. I don't have a lot I don't have a lot more to say. All right, so let's get the let's get the dialogue going. We're gonna get the dialogue going, and after that, we're gonna go to the phone lines. If anybody press number one, if you have any questions, audience, you know the number by now. And then uh, after that, we're gonna pretty much wrap it up. You know, uh, unless uh, my brother Rev O'Brien Cartwright calls in, you know, then we have to get his side of things and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, as soon as he calls in, we'll bring him in wherever we are, to, you know, wherever we are when we go into the show. But let's get this dialogue thing rolling. Let's get this thing rolling. Hold on. All right. Let's go to, let me start off with, uh, let's start with the two team captains, uh, Mac Thomas and uh, Messenger of Truth. I'm going to give you guys seven minutes to speak, of course. Uh, when it's two minutes left of your time, you're going to hit this down. And, uh, you know, that's it, man. So you guys can start, uh, begin the dialogue. Yeah, you can talk. Hey, Sal, okay. real quick. My... Hang on. Uh, um, hey, you got a messenger. You got a messenger. Um, he's, he's saying, I heard you on the air, and he called me 441. Did you, okay. did you see 441? Right. He's saying that you said it's very good. I don't know why he's not connected, though. Okay, so I'm going to find him on the switchboard. I got you, but y'all can, y'all can continue. All right, no worries. All right, mm-hmm. cool. Okay. I'm just yeah, my, my, yeah, no problem. Um, my initial question um, that I have here is I, I'm, I'm trying to understand your stance. When, when did the Yahudim leave the law to do something new? When did it leave the law to do something? I'm going to need you to explain. Okay, so you're saying that you're you're saying according to Christianity, the the doc one of the core doctrines of Christianity is that you do not have to keep the law. When did the Yahudim teach that? So what what Christianity is saying is is not saying that you don't. You, it's not saying you live a lawless life. That's. <laughs> That's never been Christianity. I, I've, I've never even heard any true Christian going around saying, hey, you can lie, steal, kill, live immoral, divorce, you know, smoke weed, disrespect your governments, uh, murder. I've never heard that. I've, ne- I've literally never heard that. I think it's wrongly no, interpreted. I mean... You want me to finish or, or what? Go ahead. What, so I, I think it's wrongly interpreted by what Christians mean when they say that um, – you know, we're we're not we don't keep the law. What the Bible clearly teaches and what Christianity has been teaching for two thousand years isn't that not to keep the law. It's not promoting lawlessness, it's saying that the law is not used for salvation. There's a difference. Can you show because of the, can you show me the law scripture that says that? Because the law was never created for salvation. It's all, it's literally all through the book of Romans. You got passages in, in Galatians, for example. One of the things Paul wrote was uh, yeah, I'll give you one because now we're, we're getting into the question and answer stuff. I'll give you one. Paul said, whosoever of you thinks you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. But the same Paul also wrote that we are saved by grace. So if we're saved by grace, if that is the seed, if that is the foundation of salvation, but Paul is now saying if you think you're justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. What Paul is saying is that anyone who thinks they are justified by the law, they have no salvation. So what we've been saying for 2,000 years is that the law is not meant to save. And there's, there's a whole lot of things I can go. I can go all the way back to God's test. I can go back to what Moses said uh, concerning the law, and I, I will once we get into the actual show, but I don't really want to go into to the deep details right here. But Christianity does not teach lawlessness. Even before I well, came, became a Christian, I knew it didn't teach lawlessness. 
the issue the issue is is that when you're saying that it does not teach lawlessness, you're because what you just said is that the Torah is not meant for salvation. It was never meant or it is not used for salvation. And what I asked you was when can you show me scripture that, that shows that? And that that doesn't line up with what uh with what Shaul is saying, because he clearly says, he cl- he says in uh, Romans chapter six, he says that um, he says that what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yah forbid! How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Yahushua Mashiach were baptized into his death? When you get to chapter 7, he says that I found the, the law which was ordained to life. If something is ordained to life, how can it not be ordained as for salvation for anybody? If it's, if, it's not ordained, if it's ordained for life, and we see the same thing written in uh, Psalms 19, if it's ordained to life, how could it not be used for salvation? The, the reality is, if you're talking about life, that's, life is living. So the law is meant to protect. Like, for example, the, the dietary things are meant to protect us from germs, parasites, etc. It's not meant for make us heaven bound. It's not meant for, in other words, nobody went to heaven because of food. Nobody goes to hell because of food. Nobody goes to heaven because of, of a festival or feast. Uh, same thing with days. Nobody goes to hell because of days. It's, it's morality. God has judged morality even before the law existed. That's why the flood came. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah came. The law didn't exist until Moses. So as far as salvation is concerned, the patriots didn't have the law. They didn't have oracles. They didn't have prophets. They didn't have scribes. But they had salvation. So in, and, and in the book of Romans, the whole reason the book was written to begin with is it's not just two Jews, as was said earlier. Uh, Paul is addressing both Christians, meaning Gentiles, and Jews, because Rome had evicted the Jews out of Rome for four years, told them, get out. It didn't matter if they were religious or not. They had to leave Rome, but Christianity continued to grow. So when the Jewish Christians returned, they found the Gentile Christians not keeping certain laws and things like that, and they were bumping heads. So Paul is writing a letter to both the Gentile and the Jewish Christian. And that's why sometimes it seems like he's supporting the law. And other times he's saying, no, the law cannot save. It's clearly in the book of Revelation because, I'm sorry, Romans, because he's talking to two different people. But never does he say that the law is unto salvation. To say that the law is unto salvation is insertion. Because even salvation comes before the covenant. It wouldn't be insert. It wouldn't be insertion, because in order for you to say that, then what Abraham was doing when he kept the law would be false, because it said the reason why even the covenant was even established with his son is because Abraham kept the law, statutes, and commandments, even though it clearly says he was accounted righteous through his faith. What was his faith representing? His obedience to a written through a law that he had to keep. Secondly, if you're saying that it was not ordained to salvation, what does it mean over and over again when we see in Torah where it says that you shall be cut off from your people? If you're cut off from your people, don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Radio. All right, I apologize, fellas. Seven minutes is up, though. Seven minutes is up. All right, so I got to go down the line. Oh, by the way, I spoke to um, Reverend O'Brien Cartwright. Uh, we did a radio check. He sounds loud and clear. However, due to his prior engagement, he, he's not able to be here for the remainder of the rest of the show. But he does promise that he will be here for Friday, April 26th. I'm glad to hear from you, brother, and I'm glad you made an effort to call in. We appreciate you and uh, look forward to hearing from you uh, Friday, April 26th. But uh, let's go to the next person. Let's go to, uh, let's see. Let me go to Devoted to Yah. Let's go to Devoted to Yah. Devoted to Yah. Okay, you can, uh, hold on. 
you can uh, actually you can download that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Messenger. Yeah, you want to start Messenger? You can start it. You want me just? Oh yeah. All right. Well, it seems like um, I'm willing, definitely willing to to to. We really can't engage. You know, if they're, if they're asking questions, we have to answer. It's as I was saying to uh, you, Sal, and, and Mac. Uh, last night in the three-way call, it, this isn't something <laughs> that my side can actually prepare for. You know, it, it's not possible because uh, we don't know exactly the sort of questions they're going to be asking and stuff like that. But as I said, either we know or we don't know. You know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. But I did not say that I would not be willing to speak to devoted to y'all concerning those topics. If he, if he, if you want to know my position on what was it, I think. It was uh, replacement theology and dispensationalism. Replacement theology, absolutely false. I am not a supporter. Okay, the church does not. The church does not replace Israel. I've got a serious echo in my ear. Echo in my ear. Uh, sorry, that's me. Okay. Yeah, mute your mic. Yeah, um, so, mute your mic. Yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically, no, I don't. I don't support spiritual Israel, not in the sense that people mistake it to be. Because that leads to this replacement theology stuff. So my answer is absolutely not. The church does not replace Israel. And as far as dispensationalism, it depends on what you're reading. It depends on what you're looking at. Um, To me, dispensationalism is a tool, just like book, chapter, and verse is a tool. People say, oh, it's not in the Bible. Well, you know what? Nor were the names of the books, nor were the chapters, nor were the verses. These things were added many centuries after Jesus was long gone. Um, but they're tools. It's just like the law. The law is not divided. There's no such thing as, really and truly, there's no such thing as moral law over there or dietary law over here or ceremonial law over there. The law is one, but mankind have divided and categorized the law. I don't have a problem with tools because it helps us to remember and retain and memorize certain things. But when it comes to dispensationalism, it's the same thing. I look at it as a tool. Now, it's evolved into a lot of stuff that people talk about today, but dispensationalism in its core is very simple like this. The uh, – uh, uh, oh, sorry. My alarm's going off. No, let me do this. Let me do this. The, um, for example, the, 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 the uh, people will be judged according to their conscience because the law of Moses didn't exist. Like Abraham had no written law. He absolutely did not. His laws are very specific towards himself, and I can even list them out. Some of them are found in the law of Moses. Very few of them are. Most of them absolutely are not even in the law of Moses. Not to mention all the scribes and all the prophets who wrote about the origin of the law, they all said the law came through Moses. Not Adam, not Seth, not Abraham, not Noah. They all, every single one of them, said the law came through Moses. So to say that Abraham had a law, that's, that's not even biblically accurate. Um, but from, from Adam to Moses and all the nations who have never even heard of Moses or Israel, they will be judged according to their conscience because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't need a law to tell me that stealing from my mother's purse is wrong. Didn't even know the law. But as a boy, whenever I tried that, I felt it in my spirit. It was the wrong thing to do. So on judgment day, God is not going to judge people according to the law they never even heard. He's going to judge them according to their conscience. So that dispensation of the law is for those sort of people. Sorry, of of the conscience is for those sort of people. When it comes to Israel, they are in the dispensation of the law because they've been told essentially right from wrong. It's been told in the law. So they will be judged in according to the law. They're not going to be judged according to their conscience per se. They're not going to be judged according to the gospel of grace because Jesus hadn't even come yet. But then we fast forward to Christians and all who have heard the gospel, they're judged according to the convictions of the spirit, the gospel of grace. Similarly, even during the the great tribulation, I'm trying to rush because I know I want to give you time to speak, but even during the great tribulation period, that dispensation is going to be different still. It's not about the law of Moses and it's not about the gospel of Jesus. Neither is mentioned for the entire parts of the Bible that are dealing with Jacob's trouble and the Great Tribulation. So that's going to be even different. It's a different dispensation still. And we know that because an angel tells mankind how to find salvation. It doesn't say turn to the law of Moses, and the angel doesn't say repent and turn to Jesus. It says 
do not take the mark of the beast nor worship him. That is a completely different dispensation. So for me, dispensationalism as it truly is in its core, just like Zionism is protecting the ownership of the land that it belongs to the Jews, uh, at its core, and I got disconnected. No, you good. That's uh, supposed to be a two minute bell. It's a thunder. But go ahead. It's two minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna shut go up. So I'm gonna shut up so I can so uh, devote it to Yakin. But I hope that I dealt with these two things because he wanted to know where I stood with replacement theology and this space, this uh, dispensationalism. I'm gonna let him talk so he can. Yeah, devoted. Yeah, devoted. You probably muted yourself. All right. All right. Hey, um, message of truth. I appreciate that. Um, grace and peace. I don't know if you heard me earlier. I said grace and peace. Um. But, uh, so, interesting. So, you're not, you don't believe in replacement theology. Um, you're more of a dispensationalist, but it depends, you said, on, on what we're reading. And then you, I heard you say that uh, you don't believe in the category of moral law. Like the category no, no. is being broken down no. in civil, moral, and, and uh, judicial. Is that correct or no? No, I, I didn't say I didn't no, believe I in moral law. law. I, I said the categories were created uh, by uh, men. Uh, created by what, I, what I'm saying is that the, the Bible does, the Word of God does not categorize the law. The law is the law. The 6.113 is the law of Moses. It's the law of God. Even the 10 is not supposed to be separated from the 603. It's one law. Um, so I'm not saying I don't believe in moral elements of the law. What I'm saying is that mankind have classified the law. And what my point was, it's a tool. Just like dispensationalism is a tool. Just like book, chapter, and verse, they are tools. I have no problems with tools, is, is what I was saying. Okay. Um, thank you for that clarification. Um, so, Scripture doesn't, but man does. That's what I got. And you also agree with the moral law concept, right? So I agree with my, the entire thing. Yes. Right. You also said the law is, is one, but um okay, let's go with uh can you find Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Bay Talk Free Radio. All right, family, seven minutes is up, y'all. Seven minutes is up. This is the preliminary show for Christianity on Trial Defenders of Faith that's going down Friday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, it's the preliminary show. Uh, so let's go to, we have a dialogue session right about now. Everybody has seven minutes to, you know, dialogue with each other. And listen in audience, if you have any questions, I see you have people on the phone line, check out the show. Just press number one. We'll add you in. But uh, let's go to, um, let's, go, let's go to Brother Israel. All right, you can, uh, you can begin. All right. Um, messenger, I would like to get through as many questions as possible. Um, if you can keep your answers as brief as possible, that would be great. So um, according to the Renew Covenant or what people call the New Covenant, how is one saved according to the doctrine of Christianity? Uh, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, repentance, and turning from sin. And following the teachings of Jesus and the apostles. Okay, so does that culminate with faith? Is all of that faith? Well, yeah, I would imagine because you you really wouldn't do any of it unless you actually believed. I would imagine. Oh, okay. Is all of that hope? Hope will be inclusive. Okay. Is all of that baptism? Uh, baptism will be inclusive. And is it uh, grace as well? Is all of that grace? Grace comes from God, so yes. Okay. The reason I ask because in Acts 16.31, Ephesians 2.8, 1 Peter 3.21, and Romans 8.24, you have four different criteria that says one is saved according to the Renewed Covenant. So I just wanted to ask you that. So um, Pentecostal Protestant Zionist. I guess that could be another one added to the 33,000 sects of Christianity. So um, which one of those would be the more proper? Out of the 33,000 plus, which one is the more proper sect 
of Christianity that brings salvation and the true gospel to the people. Christianity. I've, I've, already, <laughs> I've already made it clear. There, it, the denomination, it does not matter as long as fundamental teachings of Christianity exist, which I, I thought I was clear. The, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, the virgin birth, the deity of Jesus, the Trinity, repentance, holiness unto God. Um, you know, those, those are the, the core tenets. In fact, I can make it real easy so that we don't play the game. I can make it real easy. The Apostles' Creed sums up Christianity. Okay. So if, um, if, if, the, if, if, a, if a denomination adheres to the Apostles' Creed, they are Christians. It doesn't matter okay. what their denomination is. Okay. Um, you said you remember a time when Christians couldn't go to the movies, wear makeup, wear pants, or when uh, homosexuality was, you know, not accepted. So were those Christians in the truth, or was that um, legalism? The world might call it legalism. We were called, we were called Bible bumpers. We were called intolerant. Um, but so is everybody who tells the truth. So, all of right. course, they were in so, the truth. All right. So today, would that be proper Christianity if uh, those that call themselves Christians did not go to the movies, wear makeup, wear pants, and denounce the uh, homosexuality? The last, of course. But as far as uh, the makeup, um, women were in pants. you got to remember we're talking 80s, 90s. I don't remember women. Yeah, but I, that's pants, why I, I asked think. you because Christianity is supposed to be eternal. It's not supposed to shift with the errors of um, different, you know, we're, gaps we're not, in time. Ages. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. If yes, you sir. ask a question, let me finish. The thing yes, is, sir. nowadays there are women's departments. A woman wearing women's jeans is wearing women's clothes. If you don't believe me, then go to uh, uh, Walmart tomorrow. Go into the women's section and buy women's pants, put them on, and walk around and see if people don't call you a cross-dresser. It's still pants, but it's pants designed for women. But back then, they didn't have this. And because it was also not very common, it's, 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 in some ways, it's as silly as saying that men wore skirts because once upon a time, pants, did, pants didn't exist. And that's a fact. Once upon a time, <laughs> underpants didn't exist. We wore well, that, well, skirts. The Bible, the Bible actually tells you that they had linen breeches, so underwear did exist. Um, so I said once upon a time. I didn't, you're, you're talking about you're talking about once they did exist. I said once upon a time they did right. not. But we're talking about Christianity, not not history. I am. Um, the next question I have for you is: um, so with that with that logic, if they created a man skirt tomorrow, is it cross dressing today? For me, I wouldn't wear men's skirts. I see guys, no, for some guys do that now. Christianity. You said it wasn't messenger of truth on trial. You said Christianity. For Christianity. This is true. Okay. So you said that is cross-dressing if they invent it today. Today? Yes. Two-minute bell. It's still two minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but today, for right now, I would say, yeah, that's that's a little weird. Okay. The same All way. Right. The so, same way. The same way they said with women. No, you're wearing women's pants. That's that's not right. But okay, in 2019, so you, it's it's very acceptable that a woman wears women's pants. Maybe yes, in 2040, it, it might it might but be acceptable it, that men right, wear that. Okay. How how can it be wrong if men always wore those before pants existed? You're, all you're well, doing is going you right this. back to how it was in the beginning. So how can well, it be wrong? Let me ask you this. Well, let me ask you this. So going back with that logic, like you said, you would you would say that it's wrong for um, men to wear a man's skirt. Is it wrong for women to wear women's pants because the foundation of that came from a Torah perspective, which was the basis of, you know, what people call Christianity today, when, you know, a man should not wear that which pertains to a woman, neither shall a woman put on a man's garment. So would you say wearing women's pants today is uh, frowned upon by the religion of Christianity? No. All right. Um, who brought Christianity to the Americas? That's that's your who brought Christianity to the United States? 
Uh, I would say it came with it came you with have, certain buildings. You have two Americas. You have two Americas. I was very specific in my question. You have Northern and Southern America. Oh, okay. You're okay. Well, well, I said United States. United States is isn't that North yes, America? That wasn't my question, though. I said Americas, plurality. Well, I would either way. It doesn't matter. It it would still be the Christian pilgrims. I would think. I'm not American. Which which Christians brought Christianity to the Americas? Which Christians brought Christianity to America? I don't Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk View Radio. All right, seven minutes is up, y'all. Seven minutes is up. Your time in this dialogue session. Uh, once again, uh, the number is 319 Now I've got one more person to go to, and then we're going to go to the audience. If anybody out there want to chime in, and after that, we're just going to do some final words pretty much and wrap everything up. Uh, about, about now, it's 943 right now, so it's not going to be too long. So let's get this uh, last dialogue again. Let's go to Amayan and uh, Messenger of Truth. Yeah, I've been dialogue. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Sal. Messenger of Truth, again, you can, you, you're proving my point that you don't know the Bible. Um, you said Abraham didn't keep the law. I'm going to read it out the Bible for you, explain to me which law is this talking about. Genesis 26, verse 5. It reads, Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, and my statutes, and my laws. Which law right here is Abraham keeping? And this is the Most High speaking. He's not talking about the law of Moses. Abraham was told to leave his country. Uh, he was told to circumcise all the males in his house, none of whom were his descendants, most of whom were his hired servants. Um, so I didn't say Abraham had no law, as you're suggesting. I said he did not keep the law. There was only one law, Amayat, and that is the law of Moses. Moses wasn't born until 300-plus years later. Can it keep something if it doesn't exist? The scriptures even tell us, oh, as I said, over and over and over, every prophet that talks about the beginning of the law says the law came through Moses. It does not say the law came through Abraham. No prophet, no scribe attributes the beginning of the law to Adam, Noah, Job, Mechisedek, or Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Every single scribe, every single prophet, when they talk about the beginning of the law, they ascribe it to Moses. Moses hasn't been born in Abraham's lifetime. I didn't say Abraham didn't have laws, statutes, and commandments because he was told to do certain things. He was told to leave. Uh, he was told to circumcise his son. He was told to sacrifice, uh, uh, sorry, um, dwell in the land. He was told to leave the land and go to Egypt. So, of course, he had commands. But those things are not the law of Moses. They're not. It's like Noah was told to build an ark. You're not told to build an ark. That's not part of the law of Moses. It was a command that God gave to Noah specifically. That is my point. That is that is that stuff that Israel boys learn concerning the law. So, no, I never said Abraham didn't have any. I know what the scriptures say. I never said Abraham didn't have any sort of law, statutes, and commandment. I said he didn't have the law because the law, the law, the 613 mitzvah, that came through Moses. It didn't come through anybody else. God himself said it. He said, I gave you my law through my servant Moses. He didn't say through my servant Abraham. And even in other passages it says, what great law and statutes has the Lord uh, laid out for any other nation? And the answer is no one. Because it says, what great Oh, what other country has the Lord given these statues um, as he given to us this day? And the answer is no one. So even Israel knew that the law came through Moses and was given to Moses from the mountain. So that's what I said. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I, I just want to listen to the audience because, like I said before, that they, he doesn't understand the Bible. I want you to – you can hear it clearly because – he was the one that started saying that people ain't answering the question. Do you know Jeff Nye didn't answer the question because I asked him what law it was. He didn't say what law it was, and I read where it says 
for Abraham kept my commandments and my laws. This, this is most high speaking. He's saying he kept my commandments and my laws. So he's acting like when God is speaking here about my commandments and my laws, it's something different than what Moses had. It's the exact same law because it's all from the most high. It's the exact same law. But, but, but you know what? He won't admit that he was wrong is the point. These Christians don't have no kind of humility to say they was wrong about something. You know what I'm saying? And again, he never answered the question, what laws are these that Abraham is keeping then? He never answered it. Let me go to my next question, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm continuing to show you that he doesn't know the Bible. I'm going to show you clearly. I'm going to go to where Christ says, keep the law to be saved. Because he says that the law can't save you. This is what he said. I'm going to read it out the Bible again, okay? I'm going to come to Matthew chapter 19. The rich man. I want to come to verse 16. Okay? It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He's speaking of eternal life here. Okay? That is salvation is eternal life. He responds and says, Christ says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt Enter into life. Enter into life again is speaking of eternal life, is speaking of salvation. So Christ is responding to him, giving him the answer to his question about eternal life. If you want eternal life, if you want to be saved, if you want salvation, here's the answer. Christ tell him what we, what he gotta to do to get it. He says, Keep the commandments. Now, messenger of truth. Yes, sir. What commandments here is Jesus Christ referencing to for this man to have eternal life? As I said earlier, morality has always been judged even before the law existed. That's why I mentioned the flood. That's why I mentioned the fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. The man himself asked Jesus, which ones? Jesus said nothing about feasts. He said nothing about foods. He said nothing about ceremonies. Every single thing Jesus mentioned was morality. Because I already, he said nothing about Sabbaths either. He, everything he said was of a moral basis. Because as I said, God has punished morality even before the law existed. So when the rich man asks, which one specifically are you talking about? Jesus gave him a handful. Out of all those laws, he gave him a handful. And every single one was of a moral nature. And even then, he tells the man, well, if you want to be perfect, what you do is sell everything that you have and come follow me. And the man couldn't do that. And he turned and walked away. Okay. It's right there now, in the scriptures. Again, why, why would you ask me what's right there in the scriptures? Again, the man himself again, asked him he the question. Didn't, again, he didn't, again, he didn't answer the question again. Because he himself said earlier, you can't separate the Ten Commandments from the law. He said it earlier. So if Christ named five commandments here, which will be attached to the law because you can't separate them according to his own words earlier, okay? So when Christ keeps the commandments, he's speaking of the entire law because his own words earlier says you can't separate them. So he's speaking of the whole law, okay? So he cut himself earlier, all right? Play it back and hear him say it, okay? So clearly right now he's saying something different, okay? He's cut again. I have another question again to show you. He doesn't know the Bible again if I have enough time, Okay? Let me show it again. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talkie Radio. All right. Unfortunately, time is up. Seven minutes is up. But, of course, everybody's going to get some final statement time as well to address whatever they heard. Uh, listen and audience, this is your time, y'all. This is your time. If you have any questions or comments, you know that number, 319-527-6239. Simply press number one and we'll add you to the conversation. Other than that, we can get some final words. Uh, if nobody else press number one. All right. And, uh, yeah, I don't see anybody else press number one at this time, but they just listening to the show. So let's jump into the final words, then. Let's get some final words from everybody. Again, I appreciate everybody for coming on. This is only the preliminary, preliminary y'all. Tune in Friday, April 26th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time for the full trial, uh, Christianity on Trial Defenders of the Faith. All right. So let's get some final words from everyone. Let's go to Matt Thomas. Final words. Yeah. My my entire issue with this whole thing is that, as we just pointed out with some of the questions that we're asking, it's like these are the issues 
that we see in Christianity. Messenger of Truth is saying that he represents Christianity and that people who hold to the same doctrines he holds to are Christians. Not, he's not realizing that these people in this book, the prophets, the apostles, they did not call themselves Christians, nor did they act like Christians. Because we see in Scripture that when Shaul, who they call Paul, was rebuking Peter, um, he mentions, if you being a Yahudi, why do you teach the Gentiles to be Yahudi? But you're acting like a Gentile. So we see in God, we, we see that they were teaching them customs and traditions that they themselves don't hold to, being Romans. That's what we see in Acts chapter 16. So just as my, my brothers, brother Israel, uh, Amiyan, devoted to Yah, were asking serious questions that don't make sense in a Christian worldview. Because, again, as I mentioned before, it has nothing to do, MOT, I'm going to say this to you specifically. I don't care that you are calling yourself an African American and you think that holds to this paradigm of Hebrew Israelite. That's not the issue. That, that's, that's not what makes you what is talked about in the scriptures, what calls you Yasharal of Elohim, what makes you a son of Elohim, what makes you a child of the Most High is that you obey the commandments and you die for the name of Mashiach. You hold his name. His name ain't Jesus. He has a Abari, which is what they translate into Hebrew. He has a Abari name. He has an Ibri name. Yah is salvation. You don't hold to that. Because if you did, then we would see the same things that the Mashiach doing, you doing. When you see that he is keeping the Sabbath, as his custom was, as you see him keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, as his custom was, as you see him keeping the, uh, uh, the Pesach, as his custom was. How did they receive the Ruach in the book of Acts chapter 1 and 2? How did they receive it? He told them to go to Yerushalayim to receive the Ruach on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of First Fruits. That's a custom that they were told to keep in order to receive the gift of the Ruach HaKudash. How can you say that all of a sudden my religion is for 2,000 years old? Again, it's too young. We have been living on the very firm foundation since the prophets, since the very beginning. The very things, the very instructions that was given to Adam, the very things that was given to Abel, the very instructions that were given to uh, uh, Enoch, the very instructions that was given to Abraham, Yaskat, Yakub, were all given to us for us to obey because it was ordained to life. That's what Shaul said. That's what Kepha said. That's what Yakub said. That's what Mashiach said. All these men, the patriarchs that you say you hold to, obeyed the commandments. And the thing is, you can't show what they didn't. You can't show what they, what these people said that we're not gonna, we don't need to keep the law of Moses anymore because it's not ordained to salvation. That's never in the book. And it ain't right to even, pro, uh, to, to even proclaim that. That's not what Mashiach represents. He represents order. He represents what his father taught him. And that was the law. The same thing he taught Abraham. That's why Amayan just gave it to you. He kept the law, statutes, and commandments. How do you get some law, statutes, and commandments and there's no standard? All of a sudden, Noah is doing something different than what Abraham did. All of a sudden, Abraham is doing something different than what Yaskak did. No standard. And that's what Christianity represents. It represents no standard. They pick and choose what laws they want to keep. And they go on by, in, after century after century, changing the very commandments that were eternal, everlasting, the Sabbath, everlasting, the covenant of the Most High, everlasting. With that, I end. All right, we got some last verse from everybody here. Once again, we appreciate the family that tuned in. 
And make sure you check the description box if you want to reach out to any of the special guests or if you want to check out the Talk You schedule. Join the group, y'all. On Facebook, it's called Debate Talk You Radio. All you got to do is type in a search box on Facebook. One word, Mr. Sal Showtime. That's Mr. Sal Showtime. Join a group. If you join a group, you can check out the merchandise. We have Debate Talk You merch. Check it out. You also have a schedule. You know, keep updated with what's going on on Debate Talk You Radio so you don't miss any episodes. So uh, we encourage everybody to join the group, y'all. Facebook, Mr. Sal Showtime. In the description box on Facebook and join the family. So let's get the next person's last words. Israel, last words. All right, yes. Um, so, you know, I'm going to stand on what I opened up with. Uh, Yahusha, the son of Yah, he said, the scripture cannot be broken. And so, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the show. I got a lot of questions in. I'm going to continue with my uh, examination of this religion. You know, we're going to we're going to weigh up. You know what is being represented. To, uh, excuse me, what has been represented today, and which will be represented as Christianity to see if it holds up to the Word. Because at the end of the day, the Word is eternal. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the words of Mashiach, the words of Yah, they're going to last forever. So, with that being said, if you are uh, subscribing to the religion of Christianity, please weigh everything up by the Word and to see if what you believe is going away against the word of Yah. Because if it is, you are following a doctrine of a demon, one who has misappropriated the word of Yah, and um, it's truth that's a mocked. Sure. All right. That's Brother Israel. We appreciate you for coming on. Uh, let's go get uh, Amayan. Last words, guys. All right. Thank you, Sal. Um as you can see, uh, the, the the problem is that uh, these Christians don't understand the Bible. I was asking them simple questions about Abraham, and I clearly read my law. You know, I mean, it's like he didn't hear the words "my law" when Most High is speaking. It's clearly when the Messiah is quoting the the Ten Commandments, and he believes that they're all the same thing. But yet, he he have to explain something that he was taught. He was, what he was saying tonight is stuff that a man taught him. He didn't learn that from the Bible. Messenger is giving you what a man taught him. What he what another man taught that man, what taught that man that did not come from the Holy Spirit, did not come from the Bible. He's not giving you understanding from the Holy Spirit, from the Ruach HaKodesh. Nothing he is saying is coming from the Spirit at all. He's giving you perspective of men. That's Christianity. Christianity is founded with men and not with the Most High and the Messiah, not with the Holy Spirit, okay? This is the problem. That's why the simple questions I asked him, he cut himself by saying certain things, and I called him. Because why? The Holy Spirit is not guiding him to show him that what he is understanding is contradictory to the scriptures that he claims to believe in. He do not believe in the Christ of the Bible, he believed in the man-made Christ that was made by men. That's what Christianity believes in. And in the trial, we're going to show it clearly that they don't believe in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. They believe in a man-made Jesus. And with that, I'm going to leave it there. All right, that's Amayan. All right, uh, let's go to Devoted to Yah. Last words, brother. Okay. Uh, yeah, I echo Amayan exactly. I, I didn't even get a lot of chance to, to ask much, but I can already see uh, I can already see the uh, the issue. I just want to talk to the audience real quick to be a little intimate here. Listen, I need you guys, everybody, Christians, Messianics, Hebrews, if you have not studied dispensation, dispensationalism or dispensation theology, I encourage you to get a little educated on it. Um, I asked a simple question, and... What I heard today, if it doesn't, if this doesn't disturb you, you're not awake yet. He said that the, the law of God is one. He used the word oneness, consistency. However, he admitted that the term moral law is not found in Scripture is not given by God but man. And when I said, oh, I thought that he was disagreeing with the terminology. 
but he insisted that he actually agrees and he actually used the term moral law when answering one of my brother's questions. And if that does not concern you, you are not awake. We should not be holding to doctrines and traditions of man above the word of God. That is heresy. That is what the Sodomites did. They exchanged what was righteous and good and changed the word of God for a lie, Romans chapter 1. And this is, I agree with Amayan. This is, this is, and all my other brothers, this, you guys are going to see this. I want you to listen closely to how he does. How does he come to that conclusion when the term moral law doesn't even exist? And the definition doesn't even exist in scripture But it comes from man This is extremely problematic um, I want to go into some more things that I look forward to going into Regarding dispensation theology um, I would like to go into, you know, the issues with the dispensations Of how God was dealing with the Israelites And now dealing with the Christians I want to talk about this, this, this particular ter, uh, different categories of God's law. When did these different categories end, and how do you know that it stopped? And uh, so I guess we'll wait for the trial. <laughs> I hope that you guys can make it. I hope that you're praying. Um, and if, 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 if you are not awake yet to this beautiful truth that David understood, and said, I delight in the law of God. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor walk in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of Yahuwah. There's a lot of problems with Christianity, but I'm just want to, I'm going to try to touch on as many as I can, but I'm starting with this one. For me, this whole moral law terminology is extremely disgusting. And um, I hope you guys are attentive and have ears to hear. Shalom. All right. All right. All right. So that's uh, Team Hebrew. Again, make sure you tune in Friday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at the Bay Talk Radio, uh, the Christianity on Trial, Defenders of the Faith. Uh, you're going to check out the preliminary. You can check it out on the YouTube page, of course. We have the iTunes podcast. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, subscribe to the show. Never miss another episode. It's absolutely free to subscribe on iTunes. And, uh, again, check the description box if you want to reach out to any of the special guests on this platform. As always, I encourage everybody to take notes and study all sides all sides, so you can get uh, edification. And uh, we hope to hear from you on April 26th. But let's hear from Messenger of Truth, last words. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Yes, sir. Basically, a lot was said. A lot was said. I'll try to culminate. Uh, the reality is I never said that I have a form of Christianity or people don't agree with my Christianity, then they're not Christians. I know what Christianity is. I stand with the church. I stand with Christianity. I stand with my forefathers of faith. As I've always said, uh, and i said it several times tonight, uh, Christianity has always stood against pseudo-Christian religions. It's always stood against cults who borrow and distort from us. It's always stood against cults who attack it. That's been going on for 2,000 years. This is what Christianity has done. So to say that I'm out of line simply because I say, hey, if they're not adhering to the tenets of Christianity, then they're not Christians. Well, sorry, but we've been doing that for 2,000 years. Paul, even in his lifetime, said, mark those who cause divisions and teach things that are contrary. You can be sure that they are not serving the Lord God. They're serving their own interests. He's doing it 2,000 years ago, but I'm wrong. He also said, hold to what was taught from the beginning. And he talked about people who crept in unawares. Jesus himself said that wolves will come in among the sheep for saying, no, they have nothing to do with this. I'm not wrong. Um, and as far as Paul correcting Peter... He was simply correcting Peter on account of Peter's hypocrisy. That's the whole point. Peter was acting all like he was old friends with, with the Gentiles, but as soon as his fellow Jews came around, he would withdraw himself from the Gentiles. Paul got angry with that hypocrisy. That's what that story was about. 
Um, and as far as me calling myself African American, I never called myself African American. Uh, maybe a third of my family is African American. I said that my great grand, my great grandfather was African American. And the whole point of me saying that is because it was said that I can't understand this word of God because I'm not a Hebrew. The point was obvious. If you say that you're Hebrew Israelites just because you're African Americans, and if you say the lineage is through the father, then my great grandfather, his son, his son down to me, based on your theology, that makes me a Hebrew. That was my point, and it was clear as day. And as far as Jesus' Hebrew name, there is nothing, absolutely nothing in the scripture that tells anyone to call a Hebrew name. In fact, if you knew the language like you boast about, and if you knew the Greek like you boast about, you would know no Greek ever said Yeshua. You know why? Because there is no ch sound in Greek. No Greek ever said Yeshua. They called him Aesus, and he answered every single one. He never corrected them. Never, ever corrected them. So that right there is out the window. That sacred name's movement was crushed decades and decades and decades ago. And as far as the Sabbath being observed, as was their what? Custom. The scripture says it over and over and over. It was said three times tonight, as was their custom, not as the law of Moses commanded. It says, as was their custom. Of course, so they should observe the Sabbath if they're Jews. Of course, Christianity never told the Jews to stop observing the Sabbath. And when we get into the dialogue, I'm going to deal with the origin and the purpose of the Sabbath, if I'm asked. Uh, but then I heard, you know, 2,000 years is too young. Actually, it's perfect. Two days. One day is like 1,000 years. 1,000 years is like a day. Two days, wash and make ready. And on the third day, the Lord will come down and live in your sight. Two days, God will punish Israel, and then he will restore Israel on the third day. Two days, Jesus refused to go to resurrect Lazarus, but then he left on the third day to go and resurrect Lazarus. Do you think these things don't have clues? Oh, there's, oh, there's plenty I can go into. Um, as far as we, uh, uh, something somebody said, we agree and teach God's word. God's word cannot be broken. Yes, we agree and we teach that. We agree and we've taught that for 2,000 years. And as far as Abraham, as far as him saying, my law, meaning God saying that Abraham kept my law. Once again, I never said anything about Abraham not keeping laws, statutes, and commandments. I said he did not keep the law because the law came through Moses, just as Joshua 1 says. Um, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe and do according all the law which Moses, not Adam, not Seth, not Mackey City, not Jethro, not Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or Job, that thou mayest observe to do all the law, all the law which Moses, my servant, commended thee. Joshua 8, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commended the children of Israel and is written in the law of Moses on an altar uh, of, of whole stones, etc., etc. Joshua 22, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you. First Kings. Now we're talking about a book that, that was written over a period of 400 years. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Adam. No. The law of Abraham. No. As it is written in the law of Moses. So it goes on. I mean... And like I said, every single prophet, every single scribe who attributed the origin of the law, who created the law, was Moses. Moses is the only lawgiver of the Old Testament. If you start saying it came through Noah, you are the one who was outside of the scriptures. If you say the law came through Abraham, you are the one who was outside of the scriptures. If you say the law came through Joshua, Jeremiah, Isaiah, or anyone else outside of Moses, you do not teach or understand what Israel has known for 3,500 years. That is the only fact that I hear. Now, I did say the law is one because the scriptures do not categorize the law. 
And yes, I said mankind categorized the law because it's easy to simply put all the moral laws in one category. It's easy to put all the dietary laws in one category. It's easy to put all the, the, the ceremonial laws, like the feasts and things like that, in one category. These are tools. And I said I had nothing wrong with tools. I didn't say they were divinely inspired. They're just tools. Without tools, we'd be in a, in a difficult state. We'd just be trying to memorize everything. So, yes, there are laws which are of a moral nature. That's what we call moral law. But the Bible doesn't break it down as a moral law. This is what Israel broke down as, as, as categories. How can you blame me for something that Israel did and you're calling yourself Israelites? So anyway, and to say that, you know, people are not awoke because they believe in categories of the law. Well, I would say you need to clean your own house because I have heard with my own ears, seen with my own eyes, Hebrew Israelites breaking down the categories of the law in agreement with me. So if I'm wrong for saying it, I would suggest you deal with your own house and deal with the, the majority of Hebrew Israelites who have categorized the law. So to say that the moral law is disgusting, I don't know. That's, as far as we're concerned, we say what Paul says. To us, the law is beautiful. It is holy and it is pure. It is just not for salvation. Now, as far as the show, well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of Stuff that's been said, oh, he don't know the scriptures. Well, you haven't tested me to really know if I know the scriptures or not. I just showed you. I mean, some of these things I shouldn't even have to show you as far as Abraham, uh, sorry, as Moses giving the law. That stuff I shouldn't even be explaining. I can't imagine that everybody on that side does not know that Moses is the one who gave the law. Because there is no scribe, there is no prophet that ever said anything about the law of Noah the way Orthodox Judaism does. There's no such thing as the law of Noah. Nobody ever said the law came to Abraham. That doesn't exist in Israel's history. Nobody said that Adam or Seth or anybody else outside of Moses gave the law. Because all of Israel has always known the law came through Moses, even in Jesus' lifetime. He said himself, did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keep the law. Oh, I'm very anxious to talk about the law. I am very anxious to see, okay, let's see if this Christianity understands the law or not. So I'm looking forward to the show. Um, I've actually been in, in, in communication with Reverend O'Brien Cartwright. He's texting me back. I'm telling him, listen, just go focus on what, what you need to do. I got this. Uh, we'll see you next Friday. Um, God bless you. And it's also God bless you too, too. Uh, Pastor Marlon Adler's, uh, even for your consideration, I really do appreciate it. I understand you can't make it. Same thing with Minister Micah, uh, Micah Dobbins, you and your beautiful wife. I appreciate you as well. I know you got to speak at Revival, but hey, just keep us in your prayers. Our intention, as always, is to, is to represent the body and, of course, glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on that note, I'm looking forward, hopefully, to having a, a good, meaningful uh, conversation. Uh, it sounds like to me, devoted for Yah, he's going to be pretty level headed, at least up to that last point. Uh, the others may have other animosities, but that's okay. We're, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you guys next Friday. All right. Well, to be continued, family, <laughs> make sure y'all tune in again Friday, April 26th. This is a promotional show. For the upcoming trial, April 26th, Friday, April 26th, we appreciate everybody that came out. And if uh, Team Christian, if you just caught the show, we will have another team member. All the team members will be here uh, Friday, April 26th. All right, family, so take care of yourselves. We're going to see you guys next time, and y'all bless.